And we welcome you in to the John J. Moore Athletics and Fitness Center here in Jersey City Coach Charlie Brown Court as we bring you NCAA Division III Women's Volleyball Non-Conference Action. The Highlanders of Cairn University, the guests tonight for your New Jersey City University Gothic Knights. Welcome to Gothic Vision. I'm Ira Thor. Thanks for watching the Gothic Knights 2-1 on the year. Cairn 0-2. Oh Members of the Colonial States Athletic Conference, they dropped their last two decisions to Marywood and Immaculata. The Gothic Knights started the year 2-0 and oh with 3-1 wins over St. Elizabeth and Brynathen. They dropped a tight 3-1 game uh, against Farmingdale in the trailer of a tri-match on Saturday. Last game was 23-23. Had a chance to go to 5, but the Knights were unable to pull it out. So we welcome you in again. Ira Thor with you, Paul Tanisilli, and John Putter will be our directors tonight. And on the cameras will be J.J. Berticia and Ian Ambrose. And JCU will be led by a freshman who has stepped into a new position and shown immediate success. Katrina Nuendin, number four freshman out of Union, New Jersey. She is the NJAC Rookie of the Week. She has had a tremendous debut, came in as a defensive specialist. Got the Knights needed a setter after the graduation of Shayla Ware, and she has come through. Rest of the starting lineup for the Knights. Bella Sunahara, freshman out of Parker, Colorado. She was our nominee for Conference Defensive Player of the Week, and it took a worldly performance from a Stockton player, average eight digs per set, to knock her out of contention for that award. She had a great opening weekend, as is this player, number 13, Zariel Chandler, who had some double-figure kill performances, as they are your freshman three-headed monster. Let's look at the rest of the lineup for NJCU. Diana Jochimovitz will be one of your middles, senior out of Linden, New Jersey. Leah Sykendick, sophomore 6'2", out of Hoboken, New Jersey, wears number 14. On the outside, Stephanie Duque, senior from West New York, New Jersey. And Lola Vega, number 23, sophomore from Jersey City. With them at the outside, Chandler will likely play opposite tonight. For Cairn, taking a look at their lineup really quickly. Starting setter is five foot six senior Liz White. She's out of Somerset, New Jersey. Freshman libero number three, Lizzie Fay, five one out of Langhorne, PA. Bree Norton, she's a five five senior out of Elizabethtown, PA. Izzy Concepcion, she's five two, junior out of Jackson, New Jersey. Sophomore middle is Caroline Bennett. She's 5'10 at a Little Silver, New Jersey. Red Bank Regional graduate. Allison Barnes is the other middle. Sophomore 5'10 at a Masungi, Pennsylvania, number 11. And rounding out the lineup will be Lintia Guess. She's a 5'7 junior at a Wichita, Kansas. A lot of Jersey natives on this Cairn squad. Members again of the Colonial States Athletic Conference. Gothic Knights in action for the first time since Saturday after playing three matches in two days. And after today, they will not be home again until next Thursday when they host CCNY. Next action will be their first road match of the year, third Tuesday, uh, against St. Joe's. So getting us going tonight will be your rookie of the week, Katrina Nuendin. And a first serve is a service era. An area where the Gothic Knights on the season have not committed many. And serving for Cairn is Allison Barnes. And that is long. So back-to-back -back errors as we get going here. Exciting couple days here at NJCU. Yesterday we officially announced our brand new logo and athletic branding initiative, our identity, brand new marks. 
And a brand new tagline, Jersey City's team. Hashtag Jersey City's team without the apostrophe. And that attack was low. And then, if that wasn't enough fun, we launched a brand new website late yesterday. And jcugothicknights.com is our fifth version of the site since we first went live in 2004. And this, I think, is the best version. And that one is into Nets. That's an ace. And that's into the net. Three, two Gothic Knights in front. Vega puts it away. Five two Gothic Knights, another tough serve and an ace. As Bella Sunahara unleashes a cannon that forces Karen into a timeout. Whitney Seidel, their head coach, talking things over. It is six two NJCU. Two aces already for the Knights. And NJCU with a pair of kills. Good crowd tonight here at the JMAC. We had our welcome back barbecue at 4.30. Most of the teams were represented. Had a guest speaker from Rutgers, a men's wrestler who was coached by our new head coach, Harry Turner, who went to Jamaica as part of the Souls for Souls organization. And NJCU this year, later this year, will have a similar opportunity. We're taking some student athletes to Guatemala, and he was talking about his life-changing experience. Sunahara will serve. Serves a tough loader. Touch at the net. Chandler is there. And Sykendick swings, but that is dug up by the Highlanders. Net is blown, or I should say the whistle is blown, because the net was contacted as number 10. That is a blocking error on number 10. And that is long as veteran... Line judge and actually head coach Patrick Dorowalski on the Lions tonight. He's on the far left corner. He's the head men's volleyball coach at Stevens. One of the great coaches in D3 history. And that is an A is a ball that Izzy Concepcion had second guessed herself on. Was gonna pass it and then couldn't pull her hands back in time when she realized it was long. And the Knights lead 9-2. This will be a free ball opportunity. And that is out of play. And the lead is 10-2. And Suna Hara continues to serve. She is on a run here. Another nice serve. And an ace.
And that's going to be a double, a carry on Karen. It's 12-2. Another tough serve, and another ace for Sunahara. Thirteen to two, the Knights pulling away early here in game number one. Raises the net, back row attacked. It is going to send it over. Sunahara is there. Syke and Dick with the kill. The 6-2 Sykin Dick actually got pulled at the end of the Farmingdale match because she was struggling and had a chance to kind of get herself together. And a nice swing there. And another ace for Sunahara. That is the fifth ace for the Knights, the Highlanders. They're going to talk this over. They are in shambles here in game number one. We'll take a quick break. Knights up 15 to 2, not a misprint on your screen. After the timeout, back to game action. Sunahara, oh, she doesn't let up. Another race for Sunahara, and the lead is 16 to two. And Justin Beaumont, the new head coach of the Gothic Knights, very pleased what he's seeing from his team thus far. On an over ball, and Vega with the smash. Free ball right to Vega, and she destroys it. Sunahara continuing to serve well, handcuffing this squad. Chandler is there. Back set. Duque on the shoot. That is covered. Sunahara with a diving stop, and Duque to open space. Dug up by the Highlanders. And finally, Cairn with a side out as Lintia Guess with the winner. Vega, and she misses long. First attack error for the Knights who had been hitting 500 prior to that swing. And this will be sent over. Free ball opportunity for Cairn. Duque with the roll shot. That is dug up by White. Blocked back at the net and credit a kill here to Kelly Burris, who has checked into the match. Let me uh, check myself there. It's Kelly Burris. Burris is the uh, correct pronunciation. Lead is 17 5. Chandler, a little bit off the court, but Duque is there. And Sunahara is going to send it over a lot of the Knights to reset. Pushed outside. And a little miscommunication between Sunahara and Chandler. And the Highlanders with the kill. Back to serve, Lintia Guess. Yeah. 
Vega somehow is able to wrap that around the antenna and drop it inside the 10-foot line with a great side-armed little poke there. And on the side out, 18-6 Knights into the match for the first time. Krista Bartko, sophomore out of Edison, she will serve. Barco is there, run down by Nuenden and Vega unable to put it over. Vega with a swing there. Outside, and reading that well was Sunahara. Vega now with a bid off the block and the kill. So after Burrs, I say Burris was dug up by Sunahara, perfectly positioned defensively. That set up the rest of the play, and the lead is 12. And back to serve is Lola Vega. And she misses wide. And an ace. First ace for Cairn. Vega the victim on the deep serve by Bree Norton. And another ace. Back-to-back -back aces for the Highlanders. Veteran refereeing crew tonight, by the way. Some of the better ones in the state. As that overball, free ball opportunity. Barnes puts it away. Edwin Alto is your lead referee. The newly married Erin Hanolt. You see her at the bottom left of your screen. She's got married a few weeks ago. She is the four official. And then two of the greatest coaches in men's volleyball history in Division Three, As that set over will fall. As Liz White puts it away, Knights are going to call a timeout and talk this over. It's become a seven-point game. Patrick Dorywalski, Don Vanderbeck, who between them have probably won close to 1,500 matches in men's volleyball, are your floor referees tonight. Or I should say your line judges tonight. So what a great crew for this one. So after the timeout, it'll be Bree Norton, and this one is wide. So the Knights with a much needed side out. They had a 15-2 lead, and it's become a little too close for comfort. Still very comfortable at eight, but can't take anything for granted. Blocked at the net. Borco tries to get there and is unable to, and that is a kill. Twenty thirteen. Back set by Nuendin. Kachimovitz is there. And that's rolled over open space. A youthful spot for the Highlanders.
And a block at the net. Second opportunity as the Knights were able to keep it alive after the block by Barnes. Swung at the net. And this is going to be a kill for number 15, Lintia Guess. And the Highlanders, after an awful start, have rallied back. They have life. They only trail now by five. They were down by 13. And into the net. <laughs> Serving will be Nguyen. Deep float. Gwes, that's dug up by Sunahara. Outside to Duque. And Duque, the wise senior that she is, finds space in the back corner. And it's an ace for New Endin. And the lead is 23 15. And a little bit more breathing room for the Knights after things got more interesting than they would have liked. Nguyen again. That's going to be tipped over after the tight pass. Chandler swings and no way that the Libero Lizzie Faye had a chance there. A wicked smash by Chandler. It's 24-15. Set point for the Knights. Vega, Chandler, and Vega sends it over. Oh, what a save. And all that spoiled as White able to slip it onside the line. Great save nonetheless. Great defense. Barnes, team down by eight, served to try to keep them alive in the opening game. Chochimovic will roll it over. Gwes, and she's able to get it off the block of Chandler. Back-to-back -back points here for the Highlanders. They trail 24-17. How much can the Highlanders rally before NJCU ends it? Well, there's another one. Miscommunication. Sunahara and Chandler, a couple rookies. They will... They'll learn. These young ladies have not been playing together for more than a few weeks. Those are mistakes that will not be happening in a month from now. Back set here. Chandler's going to just roll it over on a free ball bid. There is Vega. New ending. Duque. And Duque misses long. Three in a row. 24-19. Head coach Justin Beaumont giving instruction to his squad as they're trying not to squander a huge lead here in game one. Sunahara. Nguyen's going to send it. And it comes back. Duque. Nguyen from the back row. Vega misses long. 24-20. And Justin Beaumont going to call timeout. He is not pleased. There you see head coach Justin Beaumont in the dress shirt. He's got a, a bow tie. I think that's his thing. I'm not going to try to pull that off, but you know he makes it work, so good for Justin. There you see his assistant coaches. The first assistant, Mike Kutcher, former great player, first at NJCU and then at Kane. Came to NJCU after coaching last at o Ohio State. Yes, the Ohio State University. Decided to move back to his home state of New Jersey. Help out his old friend Justin Beaumont. And together they had some great volleyball knowledge. You also see Amber O'Donnell. Just graduated. Captain of last year's team. Making her coaching debut this year as an assistant coach.
24-20. Will the timeout stop this run? Four in a row for Cairn. Chandler, good save. Vega will roll deep. And another kill for Gwess. This one isn't over, folks. Gwess, four kills in seven swings, hitting 571. There's no more timeouts. Knights have to win this on the court now. Sunahara had trouble with it. Duque there to save it, and Knights send it over. Time to reset. Duque. And that is another kill by Gwess. Kill. And a service error ends it. The Knights led 15 to 2. Cairn didn't quit, but ultimately their serving let them down. And the Knights, carried by their serving in set number one, victorious 25 22. Knights lead 1 0. We'll be back for game two when we return in about three minutes. We're back here for set number two. The Gothic Knights jumped out to a 13-point lead, held on for dear life. 
but like a wild ride on a hand glider, they were able to land on two feet. And thankfully for NJSU, they did enough early to hold on late. First serve for the Highlanders was long, and your rookie of the week in the end, Jack, Katrina Nuendin back to serve, Knights leading 1-0. That's blocked back. They say it never went over. NJCU unleashed eight aces in game one behind Bella Sunahara, who had six. One each for Nguyen and Chandler. And that is long, and the lead is three. Cairn University, the Highlanders, they used to be, for those who don't recognize the name, they changed the name about five years ago. I think it was 2014. But they used to be, as that is not going to be able to run down, and an ace for NJCU as Nguyen gets her second. It's 4 nothing. And attack is wide, 5-0, the Knights on top. So Karen used to be Philadelphia Biblical University before they changed their name, and they went when they made that change from the Crimson Eagles to the Highlanders. When I think of Highlanders, is that one cannot be run down. And another ace, 6-0. That is the 10th ace already for the Knights. And it could be another one. That's a tough run. Going to have to free ball over. They are able to save it. Vega there. Tshimovitz misses short. And that will end the first run for NJCU. Back to serve will be Allison Barnes, sophomore. Adam McCungi, PA, Salem Christian. Sunahara, good pass, pushed outside, Vega, never over. Karen, the religious based school. That's one of their primary majors is religious studies. That's a great serve. What a serve there by Barnes with a line drive that resembled a floater. It just tailed off and you know, soon the unable to pass that one, but I don't know too many folks who would have been able to pass. That was a near perfect serve. She was the one serving Barnes was when they made their late run to cut it from 24-16 to 24-22 before in a, a service error and she commits one here. So 7-3 to lead. Chandler, who's got one ace, she will serve for the Knights. And that is her second, the 11th for the team. 8-3 the Knights lead, their serving continues to carry them. Another good spot there, coming towards me, run down by their setter, Liz White, and Karen able to save it. In the middle, poked over by Trichimovitz. Outside, and that is a block, double block, Vega Trichimovitz. So Vega and Trichimovitz put it away, a double block. And Chandler will serve. That's going to be too tight. An ace by Chandler. The Knights are racking up aces like me in fantasy football, scoring points from Patrick Mahomes, who I have in every one of my leagues. All for fun, not for money. It's all for bragging rights. Outside, Vega, useful spot.
Patrick Mahomes better not get hurt or I'm in deep trouble this year. Just have to say that. Knock on some wood here. Off the tape. Gwess, who's been their top offensive player, misses for the first time. Gwess now hitting 364. She has been solid. She leads all players with six kills. Vega has five for the Knights. Chandler, another good serve. At the net, roll deep, long, out, 13-3. A 10-point lead, and Cairn, much like they did in game one, find themselves in a very challenging spot, down by 10. They'll call timeout and talk it over. Women's soccer yesterday. They played Medgar Evers. They won 12-0. It wasn't even that close as NJC outshot the Cougars 51 to nothing. Medgar only had the ball in the NJC offensive half of the field once. And it was for about eight seconds. The possession time yesterday in that game was approximately 90% NJCU as they are keeping NCAA possession stats this year for the first time. There you see our floor camera, manned capably today by Gothic Knight baseball starting pitcher, Ian Ambrose. In fact, almost everybody on our crew this fall is either in the baseball team or the men's volleyball team. I scared everybody else away. Chandler will continue to serve. That's another good serve. And a back row attack. Vega reads it well. Pushed outside to Duque with a useful spot. Chandler, team up by 11, now make it 12. Another race. Same score as game number one. The Knights led 15-3 in the opening game before the Highlanders put up a hefty rally. Will the Knights run away with this one, or do the Highlanders have another fight in them? Well, that's one way to start a comeback. Take advantage of a service error. And back to serve will be Liz White, the setter out of Somerset, New Jersey. She's a graduate of Timothy Christian School. Back set to Vega. And Vega, it's a diving save, but cannot be dug up by Concepcion. That is kill number six for Lola Vega. Lola's full name is... Yet a team, but nobody calls her that. We all call her Lola. Attack tipped at the net. One handed save by Chandler, and Duque sends it over. Nuendin. Zunahara, and then Duque with a tough free ball. And into the net, the attack error by Bree Norton. And it's 17 to four, and unlike game number one, the Knights were able to end that rally virtually right away. And back to serve is Sunahara, who had six aces in game number one and wants more. Back set here, and uh, another attack error by Lintia Guess, who was a little bit off balance on the back set there, and hit it halfway into the net. So the Knights now seven points away from a game one win. Tough serve. Kept alive by Guess and then sent too long. Attack error on the Highlanders. When I think of the Highlanders, I actually think of another school. That's NJIT, the D1 school in Newark, members of the Atlantic Sun. Line drive, Sunahara ace. And it's 20 to four. 
And there will be changes in store. Briss will return. She'll pass here, taking the place of Concepcion. And a deep attack finds the back line. Norton with the winner. Dick solo block by Caroline Bennett. First time we've said her name since the opening moments. Dick took a little too long in that one. I don't know if this set was behind her or not, uh, but plenty of opportunity there for Bennett to line it up. Nearly an ace, but run down by Sunahar and sent over. Free ball opportunity for the Highlanders. That one dug up by Chandler. There is Sykendick. Sykendick with a line drive kept alive by Gwess and sent over and Chandler couldn't save it. And a kill for Cairn. Good swing by Duque. Dug up by Gwess, and then the Highlanders able to retain it. Sykendick again blocked by Bennett, taking too long on the attack. Vega, a little roller. Chance at the net here, and off of Sykendick, and unable to be saved. Kill for Cairn. Duque with a good pass, and then another opportunity on the continuation. The Knights send it over. Back set here, the Norton, and a useful spot in the back corner for the senior from Elizabethtown, PA. Knights are going to sub here. Madeline Lopez will come in defensively for Chandler, who will get a bit of advice from head coach Justin Beaumont. Lopez. Duque is going to send it to Vega for the roll for the middle of the court. Good spot there. Off balance set there. Norton's able to swing away. Duque off the antenna. Knights are going to call timeout. They led 20 to 4. Cairns on a 7 0 run. Take a quick break. Be back for the conclusion of set two. So after the timeout, Gwes serving, Duque is aced. And that is wide.
It'll be Vegas serving for NJCU. Vega, good spot there. Norton with the roll, and the Knights, Lopez misses short. Duque misses, and again, Karen's finding a way to sneak back. Knights are not playing well with prosperity. And that ends it, as that is wide. Entering and serving will be Krista Bartko. Her team up by three. Vega there to corral the barn swing, and that's sent deep. And Guest will send it over. Lights up by three. Free ball! Falls in! And Vega with the most unexpected of kills on the night. 23-14, a lead back up to nine. And that finds the court. Barnes with a useful spot that Sunahara unable to track down. Wicked smash. And NJCU has set point. 24-15 with Sykendick set to serve. Ace by Sykendick. And the Knights take game two, 25-15. They lead two sets to none. And they'll try to close out their third win of the season when we come back.
Knights up two sets to none. They have a pair of wins this year. Both were by 3-1 margins. They are looking for their first sweep of the season. And the rookie of the week, Katrina Nuendin. Starts it off. That actually ends up being a solo block, I think, by Vega. It was close to being an ace, but if Vega, I think on the attack there, was able to push that to the floor. And they're gonna officially award it an ace. Doug, and it falls in! Chandler with the kill. Chandler with her third kill of the night. That one, not so textbook. Vega with the put away. Three nothing in JCU. They've taken some big leads in our first two games. That one's gonna find a spot on the floor. No one covered it, and Karen ends the run with a side out, and Gwes will be the server. Gwes has seven kills. She is their leader, she is seven of 17 right now. Sunahara to Vega. And a kill by Vega. Four, one, the Knights. Jersey City's team there in front. And Zario Chandler will serve. And that is wide. That's short. And that's short, left short there. By the server Caroline Bennett, six two knights in front. And Sunahara. She will serve. Sunahara line drive kept alive by Lizzie Fay, and the attack is wide. 7 2. Bree Norton serving, Karen down by four. Blocked back, and it falls in. Double block by Duque and Sykendick. That's going to go over. Sykendick swings away. Sykendick. And she hammers it home. When Leah Sykendick can get her timing right, she is a dangerous player. And that time she certainly had her timing right. 10-3 the lead for NJCU. Vega leaves it short.
Briss, the server. 10-4. Duque, nice pass. Seikendick, and a useful spot. Substitution, here comes Krista Barco. Barco is there to keep it alive. Chandler Roller dug up by Barnes. Vega! And Justin Beaumont protecting my equipment from destruction. On the kill. It is 11-5 and Barnes will serve. Two sets to none, the Knights lead. Sunahara with the pass. Chandler's going to swing away towards the back line. Dug up by Briss. And then Bork goes there. Vega from the back row. She attacks for the winner. There is Sykendick. Good pass outside. Chandler. And they cannot save it. Kill for the Knights. They lead 13-5. Roller. Chandler's there. And Sunahara wisely sends it over. Rolled back. Vega is there. Chochimovic is blocked. Good block by Caroline Bennett, her third of the match. Barco, another good pass. Coming in and playing some solid defense. Vega there, it's a little tight to the tape and unable to save it. Was New Endon, so that's a kill. I believe it was, it, it was Norton there. Norton was a kill for Karen. I terribly forgot who was on the right side. Chandler goes opposite court with that one. Dug up. Good save by Barco Sykendick. I'm actually a Trichimovic. I mixed up my middles. She didn't mix up the attack, putting it away. You end in your server. And a kill. Wes, who was on the right side that time, with the winner. She'll go back to serve. Knights still leading by six. Vega swings away. Dug up by Wes. Wes will swing from the back row, and she leaves it short. Off the fingertips of the blockers. Sunahara was able to dig it up. And Vega with the swing. Barnes pushes it outside to Norton. Sunahara saves it. Nguyen runs it down. And Duke gave the free ball. Free ball that might be a kill. Duque with the winner. And it's 16-8. to Trying to keep it alive. 
She dumped it into the furthest part of the court and three players tried to run it down for Karen. Nobody left to cover home. And that is a clear double. Easy call there by Edwin Alto, our official. NJCU, eight points away from a sweep. And Chichimovitz, long. If the Knights hold on to win this, we'll stay on the air and have a post-game interview. After the team wraps things up, they lead 17-9. Chandler, great pass. That sets up Duque. Dug up by Bennett, and then too long by Guess. 18 to 9 is your score. Duque's there. Duque swings. It's short. Chandler, her team up by seven, good pass. Vega is there, and then Barnes with the block and then able to keep it alive. Free ball opportunity for Sykendick. Dug up by Guess, and NJCU into the net. Blocking error on Sykendick. Sykin Dick, Guess with the dig. Duque covers it, backs that here, Vega. The lead is just six now. Now it's seven, double block. Duque and Sykin Dick. Outside to Duque, sends it cross court, covered by Briss. Sykendick swinging away, again, this time Norton's there. And a useful spot by Barnes as she rolls it into open space on the line. That is her sixth kill. He's hitting 333 in the match. 1913. That's long. Another service error. The 11th on Cairn. The Knights have just seven. Riss hammers it home, and Sunahara dig goes over. What a dig! Second chance, Briss doesn't miss. I should say, Quest doesn't miss. Lintia Guess with the winner. So Barnes will serve. Her team trails by six. Vega had trouble, but kept alive by second dick, and then. Three ball by the Knights. 
That is short by Gwess. And the Knights are four points away from the W. Leah Sykendick is your server. Short. White is going to serve to try to keep Karen in this. Chandler, elevation there for the kill. Nguyen will serve. Three points away from the sweep. That's going to sail over. Chandler is able to save it and then Trichilovic. Oh, a broken play. Ends with a point for the Knights. Just as Justin Beaumont chalked it up. Well, probably not. 23-15. And they managed to save it. Sunahara runs it down. Chance for Vega. Vega swings. Vega connects. And the Gothic Knights have match point. New end in the serve. 24-15. Blocked back. And it falls in. Chuchimovic. Chandler, it's over. The Gothic Knights win game number three, 25-15. And they are victorious tonight in a first sweep of the season as they knock off Cairn, 25-22, 25-15, 25-15. and 3-1 under new head coach Justin Beaumont. He had just three weeks to prepare this team after coming aboard as the new head coach on August 8th, and he has prepared them for sure. With a young squad on the floor, the Knights are 3-1. and one. Take a look at the final stats, and then we'll have a chance to talk to our head coach, Justin Beaumont, along with some of the players. Taking a look at the final leaders for NJCU in this one. Six kills, uh, six kills, 11 kills. For Lola Vega, hit 364. Just a great effort for her tonight. Bella Sunahara, 20. Well, this, this isn't right. She had a lot of aces. Let's say the, what's on the screen here is incorrect. She had a lot of aces, seven aces, in fact, along with seven digs. And Katrina Nuendin, she had four aces and 18 assists in this one. Zario Chandler, five kills she hit 556 two blocks three aces on a night where NJCU just played well from start to finish jumped out to a bunch of early leads Karen challenged him in the first couple sets but a big lead in set number three would not be overcome we'll take a break when we come back we'll talk to some of those folks you see on the floor Gothic Knights winning here on Gothic Vision 